Good health to all from Rexall. Yes, it's Sunday. Time for the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist taking a little time from behind the prescription counter this Sunday evening to speak for all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. They range all the way from aspirin to penicillin. And they're as fine and pure and dependable as science can make them. We independent druggists recommend them to our customers because we know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharpley's music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. For the past three weeks, Alice and the children have been after Phil to take them on a picnic. Reluctantly, Phil has finally agreed, and today is the day. The family arose at six, and as we look in, we find them at the breakfast table. Just one more spoonful, honey, and you'll be all finished. Now open your little mouth and I'll... Mommy, when do I eat? As soon as I finish feeding your daddy. Please open your eyes and feed yourself. Phil! Phil, wake up! Huh? What? Oh, oh, it's you, Alice. Where are we? We're at the dining room table. When do we eat? You already ate. Oh, oh, delicious dinner. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll go to bed early tonight. Now, don't forget, kids, we're all getting up bright and early tomorrow to go on that picnic. <laughs> Daddy, today is the day we're going on the picnic. And we'd better hurry. It's 6.30 already. 6.30? Ooh, what you said. <laughs> now, go stand in the corner. 6.30. I haven't been up this early since I used to go to bed this late. <laughs> Why did we have to get up in the middle of the night like this? Well, it was your idea, Father. You're having an early band rehearsal so we can get started at 9 o'clock. Hey, that's right. You know, I told the boys to be at the studio at 7.30. Try not to be long, Daddy. Gee, we can't wait to get started. Oh, boy, we're going to have a lot of fun at the picnic. Girls, please. Gee whiz, not so much noise at this hour of the morning. (laughs) My delicate little ears are not orientated yet. (laughs) Now, let's keep everything nice and quiet and sedate. Good morning, Philip. (laughs) Oh, no, not at 6.30. Alice, tell this night-blooming Jasmine to go home. Oh, Phil, I invited Willie to go on the picnic with us. And I hope we start soon. I can't wait to get out in the country and walk through the wooded glens and the dewy meadows. (laughs) At this time of the year, everything is in bud. The flowers are in bloom. The birds are on the wing. And Mother Nature is awakening after the winter. Madam Schumann Hike. <laughs> you certainly get carried away with things, don't you? You just... Wait a minute. I just got my eyes focused on you. Willie, what are you wearing? My Bavarian hiking outfit. <laughs> oh, get the rig on the little half brow. <laughs> Willie, I wish you wouldn't wear that costume. Why not? We're going to a picnic, not a bun meeting. <laughs> Certainly. Look at him in those short pants. Hey, Willie, are those muscles in your legs or are your socks lined with walnuts? <laughs> uh, why don't you get lost, Clyde? <laughs> Why 
Why will you? You're stealing my character. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist taking a look... Down, Rex. <laughs> and take that aspirin with you. Phil, you'd better get down to your band rehearsal. In the meantime, I'll start making our picnic lunch. And remember, Phil, don't invite anybody else. Just the five of us are going. Okay, honey, I'll be back in an hour or so. <laughs> Gentlemen, before we start, I want to thank you for getting down here at 7.30. I know you're not accustomed to arising at this early hour, and I appreciate it. And now, if you will, let's run through my song. And remember, I want it pianissimo, good and loud. <laughs> All right, fellas, a one, a two, a five foot two, eyes of blue, but oh, what those five feet can do. Has anybody seen, has anybody seen... Oh, fellas, wake up, will you? <laughs> I said, wake up. I know how to get them up. Jacks are better. I open for two dollars. How sleepy can they get? This one never fails. Everybody step up to the bar. The drinks are on me. <laughs> oh, they must be dead. <laughs> Fine bunch of guys, and I was thinking of giving them all a bonus. How much? Who cares? We'll take it. Never mind. <laughs> they pick a fine time to turn up their hearing aids. What's the idea of getting this up at the time of the morning? You trying to make us unhealthy? You can't do this to us just because you're the boss. And a bloated capitalist is trying to exploit us. Down with Harris! Let's burn him in effigy. Well, yeah. All right, all right, cut it out. You fellas can't get up early because you don't live right. Wine, women, and song ain't good for a guy. Why not? Too much singing ruins your win. <laughs> <laughs> if you live like normal human beings, you wouldn't have any trouble. The only one in the band who I didn't hear gripe is Remley, and you know why? Yeah, he ain't here yet. <laughs> here yet, huh? Well, wait till he shows up. I'll tell him a thing or two. I'll let him know who's boss of this outfit, and I'll... Hiya, Curly. <laughs> well, if it isn't two-toned eyes. <laughs> Mr. Remley, the band rehearsal was called for 7.30. Everybody shows up on time but you. Why are you so late? I got a good excuse. What? I didn't feel like getting up. <laughs> I don't like this getting up at daybreak. It's not daybreak. It might interest you to know that the sun has been up for two hours. Well, bully for all... Old... <laughs> old Sal could rise at 5.30. Why couldn't you? Sal wasn't out with a car hop until 4.30. <laughs> hey, how come you called rehearsal so early? Because we're going on a picnic. Good. I love them. I have a lot of fun at picnics. You ain't gonna have a lot of fun at this one. Why not? Because you ain't going. <laughs> Just for my family and not you. Well, things have come to a pretty pass when a man's family means more to him than his best friend. <laughs> <laughs> After all the years we've been pals, the things we've done together, you prefer your family to me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Francis. <laughs> It's time you realize that blood is thicker than bourbon. <laughs> Look, Remley, it's not me. Alice doesn't want you. Alice who? <laughs> All right, now let's get to work. Now get your guitar. We're going to run over my number. I don't feel much like playing. Well, you're going to play anyway. Now give me an A on that thing. <laughs> Darned, he did it. <laughs> All right, fellas. Now we're going to do the same number that. The same. <laughs> Frankie, stop crying. I want to go on the picnic. 
All right, all right, you can go. Wipe your nose. <laughs> now, for goodness sake, let's rehearse my number. Yeah, let's get it over with so we can all go to the picnic. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I invited Remley. I didn't invite the rest of you. You're not going. Oh, we're not, huh? Then we ain't playing. You'll do as I tell you. You're going to play while I sing. Okay, we'll start even and race you to see who finishes first. It's in the rehearsal, not attract me. Now, you guys are going... Are you going to play or not? Are we going on a picnic? No. Uh, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> Never heard such a bunch of big babies. Now, look, you can all stop by Miller's Lake a little later and have a bite to eat with us. Now, come on, will you? Let's have it. Five foot two, eyes of blue, but oh, what those five feet could do, has anybody seen my gal? Turned up nose, turned down hose, and flabber, yes sir, one of those, has anybody seen my gal? Now if you run into a five foot two all covered with fur, diamond rings and lovely things, you can bet your life that it's a her, but could she love, could she woo? Coochie, 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 coo. Has anybody seen my gal? Here comes cutie through the door. Five foot two? No, five foot four. Uh-uh, fellas, you ain't seen my gal. Now she's the cutest gal in town. Eyes of blue? No, no eyes of brown. Nah, fellas, you ain't seen my gal. If we run into a five foot two with eyes of blue with a turned up nose and a roll down hall. You can bet your life it's you know who and could she love and could she coo? Could she, could she, could she coo? Has anybody seen him? Five foot two with eyes of blue, but oh, what those five foot could do? Has anybody seen my gal? Turned up nose and rolled down hose and flabber. Yes, sir, one of those. Has anybody seen my gal? Now, if you run into a five foot two, all covered with fur Diamond rings and pretty things You can bet your life it isn't fur But could she love, could she woo Could she, could she, could she coo Has anybody seen my gal? Daddy coming home. Oh, I hope he gets here soon. I have the lunch all packed, and I'm so anxious hey, to... Hey, honey, get... it's me. Are you all ready to go? Oh, yes, and I'm glad you got home early. Oh, it'll be a nice outing for us. Willie and you and me and the children. We'll have a wonderful time, won't we, darling? You said it, sweetheart. <laughs> so it's you, Frankie. Uh, well, you'll have to excuse us, Frankie. You see, we're going on a picnic. Just the family. The children. We don't want any outsiders. That's the way it should be, Mom. <laughs> we ready to leave? Phil, this picnic was supposed to be just for the family. Why did you have to ask anybody else? You can invite Willie, I can invite Frankie. One bad turn deserves another. <laughs> oh, honey, surely you don't mind Frankie coming. Don't begrudge the kid a little pleasure. After all, this Poor, woe-be-gone waif has no family <laughs> all alone in the world. And all he's... right, all right. Little orphan Annie can come. You won't regret this, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> when my daddy Warbucks gets back from Africa, he'll repay you. <laughs> hey, honey, have you got enough food for everybody? Well, I think so. I have 18 sandwiches. That should be enough for six. Um, Alice, uh, uh, you better make a few more. How many more? 120. <laughs> um, the band is coming. The band, too? Oh, now I'll have to go in and make 120 sandwiches. Stay out of that kitchen, Mom. <laughs> this is your day. <laughs> Oh, look, I'll call the market and tell them to make them up, and then we'll have Julius deliver them to Miller's Lake. Now, look, while I'm calling, you people get in the car. Alice, you sit up in front with me. Frankie, you ride in the back with the kids. Shall I put the lunch basket in the trunk? Don't be inconsiderate. 
We don't want Willie to be cramped back there. <laughs> Bill, I'm glad you parked here. This is a beautiful spot. Come on, Alice. Let's go waiting in the lake. Wait a minute, wait a minute now. Before we have fun, we all got work to do and everybody's got to pitch in. Willie, mm -hmm. you unload the car. Frankie, you get some water. Kids, you gather firewood. And Alice, you start the fire. What are you going to do? Take a nap under this tree. <laughs> I'm the captain. <laughs> work, Philip, because I'm going down to the lake. There's some very beautiful colored pebbles down there. I want to take some home with me. You better go along and help him, Phyllis. He might come across a heavy one. <laughs> oh, Phil, stop picking on Willie. He's not as weak as he looks. Nah, that's telling him, sis. I happen to be an outdoor man. Outdoor man. <laughs> the last time we were out in the country, the squirrels dragged you up in a tree. <laughs> yes, but it took two of them to do it. <laughs> Come on, let's get to work. Frankie, will you take the food out of the car and spread it out over there? Well, there's a lot of ants and flies around. Well, I have some DDT in the car. Get it and spray all around, huh? Okay. Hey, honey, we forgot to bring ice to keep this milk cold. It'll turn sour. Oh, no, it won't. Just take the bottle of milk and put it in the lake. That'll keep it cold. Okay. Well, now that I've got them all working, I think I'll be the captain and take a nap under the tree. <laughs> Gosh, it's a beautiful day. <laughs> When I went to dancing, no special lad I was encouraging. Every likely laddie was my healing flame. No glance, I was glancing. Well, nothing really worth the mentioning. Hoping, watching, waiting for the real, real thing. Though they spoke me soft in the moonlit dark, they won. Came to pass to this lucky lass In the fling I was flung with you Oh, now my heart is prancing Nothing about you I see altering The years are weathering The hammer on the head With my one and only even flame They spoke be soft in the moon left off me one would do till it came to pass to this lucky last in the fling I was flung with you. Oh how my heart is ransom, nothing about you I'd be altering. The ears I weather in the hay or on the heather with my one and only healing thing. Fine thing. I'm working my little fingers to the bone. She's lying there singing. <laughs> Frankie, did you finish spraying? Yeah, I sprayed that DDT all over the place. There isn't a fly or an ant around anymore. I sprayed the trees, the grass, the rocks, everything. Well, I hope there aren't any ants in the food. They won't go near the food. How do you know? I sprayed that, too. <laughs> oh, Frankie, I didn't tell you to spray the food. You didn't have to. I was smart enough to figure that out. <laughs> well, now we can't eat. Oh, Frankie, what's the matter with you? Were you born stupid? No, I had a teacher. <laughs> well, gee, Alice, I didn't Hey, honey, you. I put the milk in the lake like you told me. Oh, thank goodness somebody did something right. It's only one thing that bothers me. What? When we're ready to use it, how do we get it back in the bottle? <laughs> teacher I was telling you about. <laughs> oh, this is a fine picnic. You pour the milk in the lake and Frankie sprays the food with DDT. Nah, don't get excited, Alice. I'll fix the sandwiches. I'll take them down to the lake and wash them out. <laughs> They'll be good as new. Oh, 
you too. The children are getting hungry and we haven't got a thing to eat. I, why don't you sell it? Hey, From the sandwiches you ordered. Hey, it's Julius. We got something to eat. Bless your little heart, Junior. Quit patting me on the head. <laughs> Good old Julius. Oh, Julius, you don't know how glad I am to see you. I could kiss you, kid. You lay one liver lip on me, Mac, and I'll let you have it. <laughs> oh, Julius, you're a lifesaver. You don't mind if I kiss you, do you? No, thanks. <laughs> there. You can bite my mouth as much as today I am a man. <laughs> The children should sure have milk. Phil, you'll just have to get some. We're 20 miles out of town. Where can I get milk around here? <laughs> Elsie! <laughs> a boarding bovine. Yeah. Shall I have a try at her, Lum? <laughs> okay, you try her, Lum, and I'll try her, Abner. <laughs> Well, fetch me a pail, we'll drain her crank case. Now, wait a minute, fellas. You don't know anything about milking cows. What's the know? Now, look, you stay here and get the food ready. I'll get that milk and two shakes of a lamb's tail. That ain't the way you get it, fellas. <laughs> Are you guys really going to try to milk that cow? Sure. Oh, this I got to see. <laughs> I'm going with you. All right, come on. Bill, please be careful. Careful, careful, careful. I think it's a big project to milk a cow. <laughs> I know what I'm doing every minute. <laughs> Let's see now, where can that cow be? That's it, right in front of you. <laughs> this is a cow? Let me try that reading again. This is a cow? <laughs> Get a good one, tape it, will you? We... <laughs> Go ahead, I give up, Julius. I'm sorry I took your life. She looks like a blind date I once had in Pomona. <laughs> hey, Remley, put the pail under and let's get the milk. Under where? <laughs> you don't know nothing. Put it under the rudder. <laughs> Okay, it's under. All right, Elsie, let her go. <laughs> Two quarts, Elsie, and make it homogenize. <laughs> Is the pail filled up yet, Remley? She ain't given. <laughs> no, I wonder why. You forgot to say please. Oh, why? <laughs> All right, all right, Elsie, we're waiting. Come on, cow, stop horsing around. <laughs> oh, try, will you, Els? <laughs> all we want is two lousy quarts. <laughs> you don't have to put no cream in it. <laughs> hey, Curly, maybe these spigots are stopped up. <laughs> Must need new washers. <laughs> Get a hammer and tap them. I'll go back to the car and get a monkey wrench. Why don't you go into town and get a plumber? I can't understand, Remley, why Elsie's so reluctant. Curly, I just happened to think of something. They get butter from cows, too, don't they? Yeah. Maybe this is a butter cow. <laughs> True. Could be a cheese cow, too. <laughs> True. Oh, I know everybody's got a right to be a moron, but these guys are abusing the plumber. <laughs> Let me at that cow. I'll show you how to milk her. <laughs> hey, he's going to show us how to milk her. He thinks he's going to get... He's going to think he's going to get... He's getting it. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. So that's the way to do it. What will they think of next? <laughs> there you are, there's nothing to it. How do you like it?
like that. Two quarts and three quarter time. <laughs> That's remarkable, wasn't it? Remarkable. Hey, have you worked with this cow before, kid? You do a great job today. He's beautiful, isn't he? Tremendous. Sure, you ought to take that cow on the road. You're great. <laughs> just got a thought. Wouldn't it be wonderful if somebody invented a beer cow? Yeah, with, <laughs> with four taps, you could get Pilsner, Ale, Bach, and Beethoven. <laughs> Hurry up, I have lunch ready. Oh, we'll be right there. Hey, Alice, we got the milk. Be a monkey's ass, they did it. Hey, look at all that food. It looks wonderful. Let's eat, Mommy. We're starved. All right. Uh, Phil, you and Frankie sit there. Willie, you and Phil. Who's that in the truck? Hey. Hey, look at the guys in the band. Hiya, fellas. Hey, fellas, look at the food. Let's have at it. Get ready, Hello, boys. Alice, you better get out of the way. They're stampeding. Hey, look at them go for that food. Stop guys, you're eating today like there's no tomorrow. Hey, fellas. Fellas, cut it out. We didn't eat yet. sitting here a minute ago? <laughs> Do you think they... No! Hey, give me no one this tree! That pack of cannibals, they ate the coat right off my back! <laughs> That's what you get for wearing a herringbone jacket. <laughs> oh, what a day. Come on, Phil, let's go home. It's been a miserable picnic. Oh, no, honey, it hasn't been as bad as you'd think. It's only... Willie, will you stop scratching yourself? What's the matter with you? Well, I don't know, Philip. I seem to be itching, and I have the bumps all over my body. Willie, you've got poison ivy. You see, Alice, every cloud has a silver lining. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But first, here's your Rexall family druggist. Last week, when old man Sal began to convince me that summer is really here, I told a customer, you know, for the next few months, I'd like to be a vitamin in Rexall's big laboratory. For heaven's sake, why? Because it would be such a wonderful way to spend the summer. I still don't get you. Well, then, picture a nice big air-conditioned room where the temperature is kept at about 60 degrees all the year round. Doesn't that sound pretty pleasant and comfortable on a warm day like this? Well, yes, it does. Well, a room just like that in Rexall's laboratory is where certain valuable and important drugs are stored. Things like vitamins, citric acid, malt, and others. You see, certain drugs are more fragile in their chemical composition than others and have a tendency to deteriorate or evaporate at high temperatures. So, in order to keep them at the correct potency, Rexall's men of science let them enjoy this air-conditioned comfort until they're ready to be used. Sounds like nothing's too good for a Rexall drug product. You can say that again, ma'am. In fact, you could say it a couple of thousand times because it's true of all the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. All of them got the same kind of painstaking attention. All of them are compounded according to the same uncompromising standards. And that's why some 10,000 independent Rexall druggists have put the orange and blue Rexall sign on their windows. You see, we all know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Folks, when you're driving on the highways this weekend, take it easy, will you? Don't be in a hurry. Remember, it's better to be late Mr. Jones than to be the late Mr. Jones. Good night and have fun over the weekend. Take it easy. Let them do the speeding at Indianapolis. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.